Hi guys, my name is Tebo Khotobijani and welcome to City Girls. This is the second episode of City Girls and you know what City Girls is about. City Girls is about independent, every kind of woman that is trying to do her thing. So my definition of a bad bitch is a beautiful, intelligent, cha- talented, charming human being. And right now, today, I don't know if she needs introduction, but I'm here and I'm going to be interviewing Zodra Nkandla. Right? <laughs> I sound like a white girl. You don't find it funny that yeah. I say. <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> and um, this woman is absolutely phenomenal. We're going to basically break down her life. Um, we are celebrating her turning... Do I tell them 50 your age? years. 50 years old. 50 years. It's a fucking huge milestone. You've done well. And she looks amazing. So, you know, Zodra... Um, without maybe making this go on for too long, uh, you know, let's start. So, you know, Zodra, people don't really know who you are. We'll get to the conversation. Well, people do know, but I think I've met the core of the woman that you are, which you are a businesswoman, a mother, um, a strength to a lot of your friends, um, a woman who is sexy, who is living a life unapologetically. And that's what City Girls is about. I feel like you're a role model to a lot of women and, you know, I would love to be in a position where I'd be driving a Bentley like you just now, you know. Um, so you grew up in Zim, in Zimbabwe, right? Yes. Um, how was that? How was it growing up in Zim, being born in Zim, and, you know, how was your childhood? First of all, thank you so much, Tebukho. Zimbabwe is a wonderful country. I wouldn't move to any country for anything. It's the best country in the world, best country I know in Africa, mm. and it's home for me. So I was born and bred in Zimbabwe, and I'm proud to be a Zimbabwean girl, mm-hmm. and I won't exchange that for anything. Uh, growing up in Zimbabwe, I was born in a village called Bubi in Blawayo as a young Kosa girl. I know most of you think Kosas only belong in South Africa, but yes, they are Kosas in Zimbabwe. That's where I grew up. I grew up as a Kosa girl, and I'm still a Kosa girl. I speak Kosa fluently. Wow, really? Yes, at home we speak Kosa. My parents speak Kosa, and there's a clan of Kosa people in, 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 in Bembesi, in uh, Matibele land. That's where I grew up from. It's, well, like any other child who is born in the village. I grew up in the village. I was born and bred, went to school, primary education in the village. Only moved to town when I was 12, 13 for my secondary education. So I know how it's like to live in the village. I know how it's like not to have. I know how it's like to have. I know how it's like to ask. I know how it's like to work hard to have what you have. So I've gone through all that and I've done it and I'm an example of a girl that was born in the village, brought up in the village, brought up from a family of a, of parents that were very strict but still managed to maneuver and build myself to the woman that I am today. So the woman that you are today, which people don't know, I mean, how did you start your career, um, you know, for you to get to the level where you are at this at this moment. Can you tell us about your career history? Okay, growing up, um, I, I, I was, well, I was looked after by my uncle, mm-hmm. not my own biological parents. And my uncle worked so hard, he was an ambassador, he was privileged to travel all over Africa as a diplomat working for the government of Zimbabwe at the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Being a daughter that I was adopted by them, and um, when they went out outside Zimbabwe, I remained staying with relatives mm-hmm. and um, staying with relatives that had children that were more intelligent than me, that were more privileged than me. I grew up as this person who always wanted to attain something in life that I said, you know what, I can never be anything less than what the my relatives were. I've always, what they thought of you, they always looked down on me and no one thought I was going to be something in life. Mm. And I like challenges. And I've said, I will never be poor. I will be that woman who is going to make it in life. I am going to be that woman who is going to excel in the industry that I choose to be in. I am that woman who is going to be a leader in whatever career path that I choose to take. And that is what I have decided to do. And that is what I've done. And as of today, I am a leader. I'm a leading a travel agent in my industry. I run a travel agent in Zimbabwe. And a few other businesses that I do, I'm a leader in those uh, businesses. I mentor quite a lot 
lot of young ladies mm-hmm. that look up to me that want to be mentored that want to learn how to run their own businesses how to run their own lives so it's 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 been a journey it's been a journey but it's still a journey going on but failure is not an option for me so are you a millionaire in dollars or rents well I won't say I'm a millionaire but I'll say I'm very comfortable and I mean to buy know, to buy Bentleys and to have the houses you have I mean me I've seen you know the clothes you wear the watches you have I mean <sighs> as an independent woman I, i think if you are a millionaire you can say are you a millionaire in dollars I do, or rents? I, i do drive a bentley but driving a bentley doesn't mean it's your own living in a house <laughs> it doesn't mean it's your own house driving expensive cars or wearing a rolex it doesn't mean that you bought it so <laughs> so you know so you didn't buy the rolex for yourself Well, I don't have to buy it if people can buy it for me, why not? Okay. So even an independent woman still needs a man that can take care of her. Why not? And it's a man, right? It cannot be it, well, whether it's a man or a woman, but if I have good oh. friends that are rich, rich enough to buy me a Rolex, why not? They buy it for you. They all buy it for me. I've got friends that are able that can do it for me. So, you know, I don't have to have a man or to beg a man to give me the life that I need. I'm able to do it myself. I have friends that can, you know, take care of you. you so it's, it's the concept I've always said to people that you know your network, your network is your net worth. Rest. So you don't you just have to surround yourself with people that with have the right people. The that company that you keep is the company that makes you. If you keep a company of low life people you are going to be a low life yourself true if you surround yourself true. with people that are hard workers people that work hard that work hard for their own money you are going to work hard for your own money but if you surround yourself with girls that want to be sleeping around with boys to give them money that is who you are going to be yes you're going to be changing men every day yeah. like underwear you're going to be changing you know moving from one household to the other and believe me you These slay queens think that men love them because they are beautiful, more beautiful than the other. Yes, they don't love you. They just admire you for that moment. Once they sleep with you, they are gone to the next best girl that comes around a- a- along. Girls, beautiful girls are being born on daily basis. Yes. Every day yes. they're being born. They must not lie to themselves so that because I'm more beautiful than the next girl, they are the ones that are going to win have the, that have the trophy. It's not like that. Intelligence brain working hard i believe a girl child must work hard for what they want they must work hard for their own money mm-hmm. don't depend on a man yes for anything yes. yes a man can look after you a man can assist you mm-hmm. but be that woman that can be financially independent with or without a man yes. they come and go they do they come and go they do i had jinimbi in my life he's gone If I relied on him for everything in my life, where would I be today? I would have gone back to the village. So, what's funny is that everybody you are married to Jinimbi. Jinimbi was your husband. Genius. As everybody knows him, the bad boy, the Well, this is this is the perception we had of of Genius, you know. He was a good guy, like he was a known to be a happy guy. When he walks into the room, he would brighten the room. He would make everybody have fun, but You are married to him and a lot of women saw him as a player. So, you know, how did you guys meet and as an independent woman as you are? How did you guys meet? And and you know, can you just kind of tell us about your relationship, I mean, how how it came about, how you felt attracted to this man who was tall, dark and handsome? And, you know, can you just tell us about your story with Genius Kinimbi? Wow. Um I met Genius at the airport, at the international airport one one afternoon. He was picking who he was picking. I was coming from where I was coming from and he came to me, "Oh, my name is Denim." He what 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 I said, "Okay, who the hell are you?" Mm-hmm. I didn't know about him. I'd never met him. We exchanged numbers and we started talking. Mm-hmm. But Genius been Genius. He was very active guy. He kept on calling. we became we ended up becoming friends for three, four years he oh, was yes, chasing yes. me for so long but we ended up being friends than anything and then maybe after four years i decided to give it a try but i had said to myself i could never ever i could never see myself dating genius it was not people that i could think i would ever date Did he, have he money? was not 
Well, he, he didn't have money, but he was a hustler. He was working hard too, you know. Everybody works hard in Zimbabwe. They're all hustlers. Yes. He was just like an ordinary guy, like any other guy. Mm -hmm. But he was hustling. He, had his, he was in a BMW. I think it was a 7 Series where that he was driving when I met him. Mm -hmm. He was with his friend Kit Kat. And, you know, every time I met these guys in the streets, they'll come to my office every day. They'll be stalking me for life, for days. I said, these guys, they'll walk in this side of the office. I'll walk out from the back, <laughs> you know, for three, four years continuously. But eventually, I don't know what happened. I can't even explain how we ended up dating. Yes. We met at a funeral of more. When we started dating, his uncle, his grandfather had passed away. A client of mine had passed away. We met, uh, met again at a funeral parlor. We started talking. He invited me to come to the funeral for this grandfather. And I said, okay, I'll go. I went with him. When I got to the funeral, he started introducing me to his family as his wife. I said, oh, oh, I'm already your wife. Just two hours, I'm already your wife. And that's yet you've given it up. I, that's, yeah, that we, 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 I hadn't. Yeah. For three, four years. So you guys had not even kissed Nyan? We'd not even kissed. So we he said you are his wife? We, no, he, that's what he told his family, that, oh, this is the woman I want to marry, this is my wife, and all that. And I said, no, genius, been genius. I went there, I played along. From there, we went clubbing. From there, one thing led to the other, and one thing led to the other. Four years later, and, you know, that's how we started. Then the relationship began. So how did he propose? Okay, he took me to Italy. Oh, so we had gone to Italy on holiday. Yes. And um, well, I went in advance with some friends of mine. We went to France. From France, we met with him in Italy, just me and him. We wanted to spend time together. We went in Italy. We went to Italy. So one of the days during dinner, he proposed. He knelt down and said, oh, oh, this village boy. Oh, my God, what is he doing? But he had a ring. He proposed. And I said, yes. So you already, you already had kids, right? When you met Genius? Yeah, I had my own two beautiful daughters. Beautiful daughters, they are yes. beautiful. Yes, yeah. they're very beautiful. Kancha, what, what are their names? Precious and Melissa. Precious and Melissa. And one is graduating, right? Her MBA. Her MBA, yes. you see? Yeah. And, um, and at that the point, were you a single mom? You were a single mom? Yeah, when I met him, I divorced their father. So you divorced single. the father? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's something that people always say. Did you... I know he's not here to defend himself, but were you the one that helped Genius make the big money? Did you, did you give him business deals? Did you assist him? Or were you guys like a proper couple that worked together and you made money together? Yeah, we worked together. We made money together. He brought ideas. I'll bring ideas. I didn't make him the money. We made the money together. So he wasn't so your toy boy? He wasn't a toy boy. He was actually Janimbi as young as he was, but he had the brain of a 60-year-old man. Those that knew him, they knew him as a player. Yes. Like all of you slave queens in South Africa think All right, I mean all of you, including me. All, well, I'm sure I'm <laughs> saying that they knew. Yeah, all of, you guys, all of you guys knew him as a player, but I knew him as a different person because his playfulness or him being a player, he didn't exhibit in front of me, so I never knew that side of him. People would talk about him being that person. To you? The, yeah, people would tell me. They'll come and tell me his friends, some girls that wanted him and all that will come and say that to him. But to me, he was a good person. Good he loved me. He cared about me. He never displayed all those stupid things in front of me. So what, he does, what you don't know doesn't hurt. What you don't see physically doesn't harm you. So I concentrated on us as a couple. I never concentrated on what people told me. Yes. Because I believe for you to see how bad someone is, you must catch him red-handed, which I never did. Mm -hmm. All the years that I met him, I never did catch him red-handed. Yes, people will tell you, fine, you, sometimes you would believe what people tell you, but him coming to my face, showing it to my face, never happened so, at all. So why did you guys get divorced? Well, we, we broke up because... He was living in South Africa, and I was also just tired because people tired. talk. Sometimes tired you get of tired of people coming, talking to you, telling you things. And I think it's not what I wanted at that time in life. I had been him with him long enough, and I thought I wanted a change. As much as I wanted a change, yes, we separated two years before he, I think a year or so before he, he passed on. But so we before. still, yes, okay. but he's, we still remained very close. There yeah. was no one close to genius 
than me. They were there, all these girls that always want to think that they were the girls in his life. Do you but think still, he, sorry, do you think Genius was a blesser? So was he buying girls' cars? Was he buying? He was never a blesser. He would never be a blesser. Oh. He just used the girls because they were so loose and so cheap. So, so you do whatever I did with them and leave but, them. But what do you mean? Because then why were they fucking him? Well, I can't answer for them. They can answer for themselves. <laughs> but what I knew, Genius never bought no girl a car. Genius never bought no girl in LV bag. Huh? Genius never bought no... You spend his money in the club. Yes. He was a champagne papa. You would... Champompo. <laughs> that, that's how that name came about. You'll buy the champagne. Yeah. Maybe you'll buy you the hair before you open your legs. But like I always say, girls, <laughs> keep them closed. After hair. Just keep the legs closed. <laughs> Just keep them closed. The more you open, you open them today. For genius. Tomorrow he's looking for another girl. You open them for Peter. Peter looks for another girl. By the time you're at my age, 50 years of age, yes. my hand, this one. Yes. If five men can come and claim they that you've you. been with me, just five at my 50 years. But most of these are 21, but, 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 22. No, 21, 22. They've slept with more than 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 100 different men. Mm. For what? Maybe for money. What money? No man gives money. Work hard for your own money. Why do you want money from men? What makes you think the man will give you the money, hard end money that he works for? What is the incentive? Pussy. Yeah, but after how many? After how many? A month or two, he leaves you. Yes. For the next best thing. So the younger you best thing. What have you benefited as a girl? I, I what mean, have you benefited? I don't know what you're asking me. I'm just asking you what have you benefited? You are the one who's it's no, your I'm, show. I'm, it's I'm your just, show. I'm, I'm sure just, you speak to a few other girls. This for me, I just want to inspire and encourage yes. one young girl yes. that men are not everything that we want them to be. Mm -hmm. Yes, as a young girl, aspire to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Aspire to be something in life. Mm -hmm. Work hard. Mm -hmm. Go to school. I'm sure so many parents try so hard to take children to school but these kids because they think they're so beautiful they're so pretty and this surgery that has come around to this day and age they get a blesser they take them to do this they do that and they think that's the most beautiful thing on planet Earth. yes what they don't know you get to the age of 20 25 30 not many girls at 30 will look as good as i look at 50 as good as i look at 40 yes yes, yes. <laughs> as good as you look at 40 i'm, I'm impressed that yes. you look that good yeah. but take a 20 year old no, or even a 25 year old yeah. bring them next to you and, and and ask them just compare the two of you lifestyle yes you know i've seen most girls when they leave their homes, they live with a big handbag. Like yes, in the club. With change of clothes. <laughs> I will, I will, what is Kilava? With change of clothes. <laughs> yes. They are going to change. For what? Because maybe I don't know. I can't get back home. You don't know where you're going to sleep. Yes, you. It's if Peter does say no, you sleep with James. Oh, if, if James says no, you try your luck every day. For what? In the club. Hello. Hello. And then you, you say, I'm so beautiful. There's, there's nothing wrong with people going to the club. If that's what you want to do, go to the club. But be if you don't respect yourself as a woman, but is you cannot yourself. you cannot expect somebody else's son to, to respect. respect you. But is respecting yourself about giving away your pussy? What about people that are just sexually? Open? Why give away your pussy? Why can't you try and get into a relationship with somebody? Because. Girls of today think giving away your pussy. I, someone said to me, oh, if I don't give it away, he'll think, where is this one coming from? You know? Yeah. You, you, we've sold, our children have sold themselves so cheap. They don't know their value. If you don't know your worth as a girl, mm -hmm. don't expect somebody's son to know your worth for you. They are just going to use you and leave you and move to the next best thing. Remember, men are not prostitutes. It's us. They are women. buyers. We are cold bitches. Men are never cold <laughs> bitches. Men they are the buyers. They can be with as many women as they want. Yeah. They, they're just getting more fame and more fame and more fame and more fame. But try and be with Peter today, James tomorrow. This you are the bitch. You the bitch. And they will talk about you. Mm. They will talk about you. But because we don't have, we, we don't own our own lives, 
That's why I always say, go to school, get educated. Yes. Go to work. Mm -hmm. Do your own business if you can. Or work at least earn something. Even if it's not much, mm. but it's your own money. Yeah, to buy you your own tampons. Buy your own t you have to ask a boyfriend for, for money for tampon. For, 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 for when you're on your period, you must ask. Sis. You need food to eat, you must ask. Mm -hmm. Money for rent. Even somebody's son will get tired. They will look for a girl that is going to be able to do things for themselves. Exactly. Then you add. Yes. Help each other in relationships. Yeah. Don't want to be to, 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 to take somebody else's child and expect them to do everything for you. You mm -hmm. want to wear a designer. Oh, James must buy it for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I must go to Louis Vuitton. I must go to Gucci. Why can't you buy it for yourself? I would never expect somebody's child to buy me a gift that I can't buy for myself. Yes, of course. It's important. I, I always that. say to a lot of girls that I know, the young girls, they'd be like, I want to leave a ton bag. I said, work for that bag. Once yes. you buy one bag, you will attract more handbags. If you, if you buy yourself that one bag, this guy will see you carrying a handbag. He'll say, this girl can buy herself a handbag. Yes. Let me add to her collection. A lot of girls think that, but also it's funny enough, a lot of men also think that they want girls that they can start afresh, that they can show them new things. So I feel like what you're saying is just a bit one-sided because it's two-sided. Do you understand what I mean? Because sometimes... Guys are not looking for girls that are independent. They are looking for puppets. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you are an independent girl and you are surrounded by puppets? Then what? Like I said, the company that you keep makes you. Yes. So if you stay with users, you are going used. to be used. Very important. So if you stay around guys, Cheers. that... that, Cheers. that um, Don't Cheers. hang around users. I know them. Yes. Hmm? So if you hang around with guys that work... That respect themselves. Ladies. They will also respect ladies. There are guys who respect ladies. Absolutely. There are men out there Absolutely. that respect ladies. Yes. yes. And you have to earn the respect. As a lady. As a lady. Amen. You have to learn the treatment that a man gives you yeah. as a lady. Yes. But if you sell yourself so cheap, today is uh, Saturday. I'm at Taboo. After Taboo, I'm at Club This. I'm at Club This. I mean, clap that. Yeah, but, you need but to the end of the night, How do you expect the men to respect you? But what if I'm a dancer? <laughs> for you to be a dancer, what has happened for you to be a dancer? No, why it's my talent. I'm an actress. It's my talent. Why can't you be an accountant? But why I'm not can't you be a receptionist? No, that's wrong. No, it's that's not, wrong, it is Z. not wrong. That's wrong, Z. It is not wrong. I'm an actress. I Being studied dancer, film. I've got a degree in film. I'm an actress and yes. I've got a BA in film. Yes. That is my talent. There's nothing wrong with being an actress. There's also nothing wrong with being a dancer. Yes. But what kind of a dancer? Someone is can something go, wrong with being a dancer of a someone can go and be a dancer in a strip club. What's wrong with that? And ends up by just being a dancer. Mm. But you can be mm. a dancer mm. earning to go to university. Yes. But some people will be a dancer who then gets paid after dancing to have sex. That's mm. yeah. Mm. So yeah. you must define your, your dance, job. Yes. Define <laughs> Are what you? you're doing. As I read Define what you're doing. So what I'm against, I'm not saying there's anything wrong. If you think that is what you, who you want to be, mm -hmm. the Bible itself says your body is the temple of God. Yes. How is my body a temple of God? If I'm dancing, after dancing, I'm sleeping with 20, 30 different men in one night. But I can dance. Is this still been a temple? I may still be in a temple. No. no. So you, you must define who you are. I'm not saying there's anything with being a dancer. I would not want to be a dancer. Yes. I would not want any of my kids to be dancers. I would never encourage them. Mm. Actually, I would even chase them from my house. If they chose that career, I would do that. <laughs> I'm not saying, if, if somebody else, you think it's good for your daughter. No, no, I'm not saying but that. But I would never say it's good for my kids. For your kids, yes. yes. For my kids, no. Yes, we are not all privileged. We are not. We are not all privileged. So I'm not saying this because I'm a privileged child yes. or you are a privileged child. Yes. I'm saying even if you are not privileged, yes, suppose you end up dancing at a strip club. Just dance, earn your money. If you are doing it because you need to go to university and the only way your source of income is dancing, dance, earn your money. Be principled about who you are and what you want to do in that club. I'm going to dance, finish dancing, I earn my money, I go to the club. I go to the university during the day and work at night. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a source of income. It's a source of income. Because you are doing that. Some people, they prostitute their bodies. They prostitute themselves. 
If they were prostituting themselves to go to school, that's different. Mm. But you prostitute yourself to go and buy an LV bag. That's not good. That's yeah. different. That's mm. it's, you, well, you are not doing not, it because you yeah. don't have. You are doing it because maybe you enjoy it. I don't or know, maybe I, you're just in competition because of the new way of life, yeah? The, yes. Competition is another disease. Mm -hmm. mm. Don't compete with anybody. Be your own person. Because everyone is different. Mm. All our destinies are different. Mm. You might be a dancer, like you say. I'm a travel agent. She sells clothes. He's a film producer. Mm -hmm. Everybody is different. We can't all have the same talents. God created us, created all of us differently to do different things, mm. to, to complement each other mm. in different ways. So we can't all do the same thing. It's people have to do different things for people. But I always talk about the girl child. Please, try if you can. Try and work. Try and get people that can help you. This bless us that they talk about. There's nothing called a blesser. But if you want to have a blesser, you are only killing yourself. You are beautiful now. Look at yourself when you're at the age of 30. But baby, you're beautiful more now. So what are you saying? No, no, no. I have earned my own beauty. I've worked hard to be where I am today. And also God has blessed me enough to be able to look this beautiful at 50. So to, speaking of that, to look this beautiful at 50, is it getting work done? Are you exercising? Are you having surgery? How do you look the way you look at your age? I run 15 kilometers every day of my life. It's hard work. Every day of my life, except for weekends. Okay. Monday to Friday, I wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Sleep is for those that are comfortable. <laughs> I sleep. I wake up at 4.30 on daily basis. I run yes. for energy. Yes. Every day when I exercise, I've got so much energy between the time I start work at 8 until 9 p.m. 9 p.m. on daily basis, I'm sleeping. Yeah. I have my beauty sleep. And I wake up the following day, I do the same thing. I've got so much energy. P my friends always ask me. I know. Why do you have so much energy? Because you... I have so much energy. Because I am blessed. I work hard and I play hard. And everything that I do, I give 100% to it. You're enjoying. I enjoy my life. I only have one life. But above having one life, I know there's one person that created me. I know there's a God up there. I give thanks to God on daily basis when I wake up. It's not because of my own doing that I'm the person that I am today. It's because God has allowed me and he has blessed me enough to be where I am today. The same God has blessed me to have the yes. children that I have. Mm. It's not so many single parents have children like the kids that I have. I've got the most beautiful, most disciplined girls on planet Earth. Yes. They listen to what I say. They take advice. They go to school. My first daughter has, has done an MBA. She wants to do a PhD. Wow. My last daughter, I've got two kids. My second daughter is doing a, computer, a degree in computer science. Yeah. She's doing a second year. So not so many children want to do that. Most of kids, kids at the age of 21, right now they're sleeping because when they club last night. <laughs> They'll be waking up at 10, 12, midnight to go to the club again. Okay. But that's the life that they choose to have. So they mustn't blame people that work hard, especially yeah. women yeah. that work hard and train their kids well to work that hard. I know every parent trains their child well. Yes, they But try. They, when they then grow, they choose what path they want to take. So you can't blame parents that you did not look after your kids well because every parent wants the best for their child. But as they grow up, they then choose the path they want to follow. We might try to distract it. We might try to stop them. But when our children get to a certain age, we are not able as parents to tell them that, no, you can't do this. And legally, when a child is 18, they are now an adult. They are independent. Mm. They can do what they want with their lives. So we end there as parents that, you know what? It's now your own life. You've given them the yes, journey. Yes, you've given them the journey. We've taught them the ways. It's up to them to follow what we've taught them and follow uh, behind us. But there's nothing much we can do. 
at, Mas, after that age. Mazi, so let's go back to, obviously, it's a very um, interesting and painful subject. There's two questions I would like to ask you. As a woman, when you are getting divorced to this man, who's obviously the love of your life because you married him, right? How did that make you feel? And how did it lead you to that decision? And what were the reasons why you were like, actually, genius, I'm divorcing you. I don't want to be with you anymore. Okay, we're not legally married. Oh. It was customary. So oh, it's still the same. Yeah, well, it's still the same. It's I mean, in our country, if you stay with someone for six months, you are legally, you are husband and wife. Yes. When I decided to move on, we actually sat down and spoke about it, and we agreed. Well, he didn't agree to it. He wasn't happy about it. But I said to myself, you know what? Let me leave. Live your life. I live my yes. life. But we still, because our friendship was very strong, Mm -hmm. We had a very strong friendship relationship. So we still remained as much as we're no longer staying together. But I spoke to Genius literally every morning. So you guys were not having sex anymore? No. When you cut it off, you... <laughs> <laughs> well, question. well, no, well, no. well, 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 I can't say no. I also can't say yes. <laughs> That's my personal information. But all I'll say is we're very close. You're very no close. No girl mm -hmm. could come between me and Genius. They tried. Even when I was not with him, all those that try, whoever wants to say the way, they can come forward and speak. And say, and say. But he had so much respect for me. Mm -hmm. And I remember September before he passed on in November, we met at a friend of mine's party. He made so much noise. What did you come with? Who is with my wife? Yeah, this and this and this. He was very possessive and very protective of me. He had my interest at heart, just like I had his interest at heart. I would never walk publicly with any other guy when Genius was there. Same applies with him. He would never be with a girl in front of me. We had common friends. We would go to common functions. So if I was going to a function and he knew I was coming, he would come alone. If I went to a function and I knew he was coming, I would also go alone. And we get there and are together. So, because we're not enemies. Yeah, so hold on. Sorry, can somebody top us up with drinks, please? Anybody going to top us up? Because this conversation is about to get a little bit It's, it's late. It's late. So um, I keep looking at my phone because I also asked... Um, people from my Instagram to submit questions, you know, for you. Um, uh, to submit questions for you. So, okay. One of the questions was, what was the first trip he took you to? Okay. We did lo many local trips in Zimbabwe, but I remember one first trip that we did, which was first for both of us. We went on a cruise from Deben to Cape Town. It was a four-day cruise. Ooh. It was my first time to be on a cruise ship, and it was also the first time for him to be on a cruise ship. But we... It's so much fun. Yeah. So, so much fun. And it was... No, I want tequila. Okay. Yeah, okay. It was just me and him. With no, Genius always moved with his friends. Everywhere he went, he traveled yes, with his course. friends. He was a very generous guy. Yes, he yes. was. He, especially his friends. Yes. He wanted his friends every time to be around him. But that was the first time that we went away, the two of us. We went on a Thursday and came out on a Monday. It was beautiful. Okay. Um, there's a lot of allegations... <laughs> about how, okay, particularly the practice of witchcraft that Genius had a snake, that the snake is the one that gave, who? The snake that gave Genius money. You know, a lot of people are looking for the snake. Do you, do you want to make money? Can you believe that a snake can give money? <laughs> no, I'm just, it's a question that I'm asking. If you answer no, that question, then I, no. No, I'm asking. Because, no. Because if you know no. about snakes, please let no, me No, that's what I'm know. asking. Yes. If there's a snake... That could vomit money, like people <laughs> allege. Yes. I'm sure all of you will find your own snakes we and make them, them. You will look for snakes. Yes. That why I'm saying that is because there's no snake that vomit money. If a snake came right now here and vomits <laughs> money, I would want to see the person who's going to remain picking the money. What? The you would pick it. <laughs> You're not scared. Yo, would you pick it? No, in front of the snake. Yes, I'll pick it. I'm scared of snakes too. It doesn't bite me, I'll pick it. Yes. Okay, but, but a snake. But snake. No, because they're saying that, what did they say? They say uh, genius, because he didn't go and do his sacrifice, that's how he passed away. And you know, there the are stories of that. After I he, lived with that man for no 10 snake. years. No I've snake. never seen a snake. Okay. Maybe I'm the snake, we just but I never saw his <laughs> any snakes. I live with that man. Snake. You're Maybe the I'm, snake. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I'm the snake, but I never. Passed like a week before he passed. 
He never knew how would he know he was going to pass away. They said he went and prepared a coffin for himself. That is not correct guys. Yes, that is social that media. That, that coffin was bought by his friend Honorable Minister Tino Machakaire. He bought the coffin that genius had when he died. After he died, not it's before. taboo in our culture to buy a coffin before you pass on. Everyone's it's taboo. Culture, yes. That uh, coffin the minister came to the family I was part of the people that sat down as the family when he was asking when a son passes away the coffin is bought by the mothers but in this instance his friends wanted to buy a coffin for genius they came and asked genius mothers and fathers if it was okay for his friends to buy him a coffin they said yes the coffin was bought in south africa here mm -hmm. in johannesburg there's proof mm -hmm. evidence It was flown to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. A Versace coffin Versace. because he loved Versace. Yes, we know that. That coffin was bought by his friends. There is no way the weekend before he passed that Saturday before he passed. I was with genius. He wasn't If he about knew, going to die. How would he have known he was going to die? No, it's you know it's important for us to verify these things because it just it it, it makes people, uh, money so taboo that if anybody's doing well they have to be doing really if you are it's if you are black if you are legacy, black eh? and you make money if you, you are must black be and you make money it's witchcraft. Yes. If you are a white man and make money you work so hard. Yes. So a black man could never work hard. If genius did witchcraft, it means I also did witchcraft. Yes, that's what they say. So he can't have done witchcraft without me doing witchcraft. You're doing it together. And You're probably jumping fires. That's what they say. Well, the only thing that genius knew was God. He never went to church. Yeah. I know there was times that he would come to church with me and things like yes. that. But when we separated, he, he never used to go to church. Mm -hmm. But for the years I've known him, when he used to go to church, when he used to do whatever. I know my spiritual father he used to ask him to come to church so many times. Mm -hmm. And then he would come, but eventually he stopped coming to church. I don't know anything about witchcraft. He never did witchcraft. There is no witchcraft. Those witch doctors that can give money to genius, why can't they give money to themselves? You find that someone says, oh, I'm a witchcraft, I'm a witch doctor, whatever. They are poor themselves. How do you make somebody else's son rich? That boy worked very hard for what he had. So how, what did he do? How did he make all He did money? fuel. Okay. I knew he did fuel. He was in fuel. He mm -hmm. did fuel. Mm -hmm. He sold gas in Zimbabwe. The gas, uh, a gas station and a gas company, yes. LPG cooking gas okay. that he did in Zimbabwe. Okay. He did so many other anything that made money. He, he did. Has, he Zimbabweans are hustlers. I think we are all hustlers. Yes. Zimbabweans are naturally born hustlers. Yes. But now when you hustle and make money, you can't make money as a black person unless you've uh, you, you've sangoma. used juju, you've gone to a sangoma. My question is, if there is a snake that can spit money, find your own. Let it spit money. And, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and make your own money. If that snake was there spit it money, hey... Well, fine, I wouldn't get the money because me, I'm scared of snakes. And because I stayed with him, maybe I'm sure I would have seen the snake in the house. But no normal bean. Genius stayed in South Africa. So where then did the snake stay? There was a snake in South Africa or was it in Zimbabwe? Where did it stay? <laughs> because we would really want to know where the snake stayed. Yeah, because as far as I know... Yeah, where was the snake? Do you carry it in your suitcase when you go from Zimbabwe to South Africa? That's what I'm saying. Because you have to feed the snake. Yeah, but you, you, the, the, you, 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 your briefcase or whatever goes through those things at Customs the airport. The yes, snake so they will see the snake. It's invisible. So how come maybe? a snake... I don't know. There's no invisible snake. <laughs> Genius was a hard worker. He made money the right way yes. that everybody makes money. He was a hard worker. That boy did not sleep. He was hustling. You, you be in Harare now. When you wake up, he's in Botswana. He's in Botswana. He wakes up in South Africa. He was always all over trying to find out what can I do to make money? What must I do to improve my life? He wanted the good, finer things in life. Like everybody? He, he wanted the finer things in life. So that's why. He worked so hard because he did not want to be poor. He did not want to lake. He wanted to be able to go to LV, Gucci, and do everything and for himself. And also, by reputation, that he wanted the finest woman in life. Mm -hmm. So, did you never believe that genius cheated on you when people were coming up to you? Or were you like, I have to catch him red-handed? Or you felt that, you know what, as a woman, we are in a steady situation. What, I don't know, won't kill me. Every man cheats. Is yes. that Okay. It's not okay, but you can't change them. It's in their nature. Every man cheats. Look, Kim Kardashian 
as beautiful as she is, as wealthy as she is. Kanye but hasn't there's... cheated though. That really? Of, that really? Of he Jay Z? He cheated. Where is he? I don't know. Is he, is he, did he not leave the wife? Did he not cheat? So many men oh, have cheated. Oh, it doesn't matter who you, <laughs> it does not matter who you are, yeah. whether you are white, black, Indian, green, all men cheat at some stage in their lives. So why do we keep to polygamy? Why can't we just I mean why do we keep to monogamy? Why can't we just be all polygamous? Let our men cheat, they just take care of us and then after that we all share. Well it's really up to <laughs> Whatever you assign yourself to, if you want to, to be polygamous, you, you will be. But most men don't want, they just want to have slay queens that want to be kept. And maybe they'll not marry two wives because they don't want to have two. They just want to be... Have to snacks. Have, to just have snacks. Toys, like Genius would call them. Oh, you want to have toys. toys. It's a toy. <laughs> you, you play with a toy and it moves on to the next person. So it's not permanently yours. Yeah. They're toys. But the unfortunate thing, you can pass girls it must realize that men treat them as toys and they don't care who plays with that toy they would swap you amongst themselves true men do that they do but that. because you you sell yourself so cheap as a girl mm -hmm. today you're with peter who is friends with uh, john you finish with peter peter passes on to john john passes you on to the cephas cephas to felix felix you are all friends by the time you know you've slept with all your friends and you still remain with none of them. Really? Mazi, so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of, obviously there's a lot to dig up about you. It's not just on the level of, of just genius, but I feel like I knew Kinimbi, um, he was a friend of mine, and uh, we all used to party together. When I used to host club, you know, he'll support us and whatever. Um, the day he passed, that day, I think for a lot of people it was very traumatic. I just want you to tell me as 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 a as a I mean it's unexpected the way he passed. It, it was terrible. I mean, how did you feel that day? I know it's obviously ridiculous to ask that how did you feel, but can you describe what you were doing when you heard the news and how it happened if you I don't was mind? Definitely sleeping. You were sleeping. I had spoken to Chinas at 1.40 in the morning. I used to supply them with champagne for the club. He had a nightclub in Zim. Mm. What was the club called again? Dreams. It's still there, right? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, so he called me about 1.40. We've run out of alcohol. I'm sending my driver to pick alcohol at home. And, you know, I mean, it was, it was a norm. They would run out of alcohol. I, would, I always kept the, it chilled in the house so that whenever they needed, they'll come and pick it up. So 140 calls me, five in the morning, uh, his friend Remo calls me. The first thing I said to him, guys, allow me to sleep. It's five in the morning, you call me, you've run out of alcohol again. I thought they wanted alcohol. Hmm. Then he breaks down in tears, he starts crying. Genius has passed away. Hmm. I said, what do you mean genius has passed away? What's really, what's going on? I think I lost it for a minute. I didn't believe it. He says, what do you mean lost it? I just lost myself. Did I just lost myself. I, I, I left my bedroom undressed into my car, drove. When I was at the gate, I realized I was naked. I drove back to dress up and then went. I told my kids, my daughter, um, my eldest daughter was seven when I met Genius. My youngest was a year, I think, when I met Genius. Mm. So he's the only father they knew. Hmm. So... When I left the house, my eldest daughter just started vomiting, diarrhea. She ended up in hospital. I was busy at the accident scene and my you, child you was saw, in hospital. You saw his body? I was one of the first people to arrive at the accident scene. I got there when was, his body was still lying down on the floor. I got the blanket that covered his body. He was, I got there maybe about 10, 15 minutes after he had passed away. Was he burnt? Was he no, he wasn't burnt. He was... He was fine. His face he, was he was fine. okay because the guys that took him out of the car, he passed out after he had, he had they'd removed him from the, 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 the car. But unfortunately, his friends that he was with in the car, they bent to ashes. You, you know what? It's... Um, so, Zora, you got there when the girls were screaming? No, no. When I got there, the car had, no, thing already, already. Had, had already bent. I think it took about 10 minutes, 15 minutes for at most. Bend, for them to bend? Yeah. Because it then exploded, remember? Yes. 
the car like exploded. Yeah, like a bomb. It was, you know what? It, it's God's time. His time was up. No, it is. You don't die because of a disease. You don't die because of a car crash. You die because it's time. Time. True. So you think God, it was his time. It was his time. God was God. Yes. You know what? God is the author of life. If God wanted genius to be on this planet Earth, he would still be on Earth. But God knew that genius was going to die the way he died. That's why he died that way. With the people he died the, with. The people that he died with. We can try and talk about it and say, but why or oh, why? Who did you want it to happen to? We can ask ourselves so many questions. But if you are a Christian, you will know that his time was up. God's time. So you got closure from believing that? I got closure, but it, not that is not painful. It's still painful. Do you cry? A lot? Sometimes I do. He is one person that I relied on on everything mm. I did. Mm. Even when I was no longer with him. Mm. If I had a, a flat tire, my phone. His number was the easiest. 0772-442-442, your phone. Thank God they can't call him anymore. You, you. What's your problem? That's the problem. That's the first thing I would do. If I had a problem at home with electricity, I had no water, whatever problem I had, mm. he's the first person, was my first point of call. Whatever problem I had. And he, ne he would never say, I can't do it. Even if he was out of the country, he would send his brothers. Up to today, his brothers are the ones that remain doing whatever I need done. So did, who inherited all of Genius's money, his houses, his cars? His family here, uh, he's got two sisters and his dad is still alive. His mom, unfortunately, passed away as well in January, the Again? same year Genius oh, passed. I'm sorry about that. So the, the, the younger brother passed away the previous year in January. Mm -hmm. Then the mom passed away 2019 in January. Then Genius passed on eight months later. So now who's left behind with these things in that two gorgeous sisters, house? And two sisters and his father. Can they maintain all of that? Yes, they can. His money is there. His cars are there. They can maintain it. They are maintaining. We do assist here and there. If they need advice, legal advice, I do assist them because I'm very close to the family. So you didn't so, get anything? You didn't well, I didn't need anything about my own things. Thank you. I don't oh, need anything. Okay, Mazi. Hi, guys. I'm going um, <laughs> so, with all said and done, that's happened. Genius is gone. Anyway, you had already divorced. You clearly had people that you were seeing, or those five guys that you said you have in your hand that you've been with. No, I said I don't have up to five that I've been with at my 50 years. That's what I said. So one every, every 10 years? Not one every 10 years. <laughs> I, don't know. I was married for 15 years. Okay. Then I had genius for 11 years. Okay. The, in the other years, I was a baby. Oh, I understand what you mean. Mm. So are you not? I'm still mourning. But I mean, you know, I've heard something, right? That, I mean, even me, I mean, at my age, I, my 40s are the best years of your life. Mm -hmm. Towards your 60s, especially um, sexually. So there's nobody for you right now? You know, I'm hoping... You're not attracted to anybody. You don't walk I'm past attract and like, yeah. I, I, You know, I get attracted to different guys every now and again. There's so many guys, handsome guys out there. Mm. But as handsome as they are, what is it? What can they offer? Nothing. What are you looking to be offered? I want stability. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm stable myself. Yes. I also want a stable person mm -hmm. in my life. I'm praying that God one of these days will... Um, bring my own Mr. Man. I don't like them handsome. As you know, Genius was not handsome. He I wasn't. love them tall, dark, and ugly. That's what I love. <laughs> so, but, in, in, yeah, you know, that's, that's what, that's, attitude. yeah, that's what I like. So, there's not a lot of God, those. God, God, yeah, there's not a lot of those. That's why he was a rare person. Yes. So, but I know one day, I'm praying on my 50th, God will send someone my way. At your party? Well, not at my party when I'm 10, 50. It <laughs> doesn't have to be at my party, but and, I know one day God will send someone my way. Does he have to be younger or it doesn't matter? Age is nothing but a number. So Genius 70? was younger than me. No, 70, what will I do with the 70-year-old? Why are you judging? Maybe the 70 has got energy. You know what? And he's going to die in maybe five years' time. For what? Why do I want another man who's going to die on me? <laughs> I want, a, 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 you know, company, companionship. 
That's I'm, I'm looking for a friend. A best friend. More than anything, I'm looking for a friend. It's not about sex or anything. Fine. It's not about sex. Yeah. It's not about sex. Relationship are not about about sex. About sex is important. So yeah, it complements. Why? No. no, it's not important. It, it so, if it, if it is not a, so if if the sex is important, why? Please, it's girls. It's a, a plus. It's an addition. Okay, so are you guys saying that you get into a relationship for sex? No, sex is, is part of it. Yes, it's part of it. I must be but attracted it's not a priori- to you. It's and, not a priority. To, yeah. Yes, you must be attracted to the person before you can even have sex with them. Mm-hmm. No, sex so it's is not, not sex, a factor. You know, but it must be the relationship that you have and you click with the person before you can move to the next stage. Right. I, I think sometimes we just have to choose to dis, um, to disagree or to agree. I think different specs, uh, different what? Different strokes for different folks. I think some, for me, some people for are very me, sexual and sex is important for a relationship. Some people it's about emotional commitment. It, sex, I'm not saying, don't hear me wrong. Okay. I'm not saying you get into with someone and don't have sex with them. Yes, it's obvious. It's obvious you will have sex eventually with the person. But build a relationship first. It depends what is it that you are looking for in a relationship. Are you looking for sex? Are you looking for companionship? Or are you looking for sex and and go? What are you looking for? I am looking for a partner, a lifetime partner. I'm not looking for someone that is going to come into my life at my 50 years Mm. and come out and hit and run and go tomorrow. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for someone who is coming into my life to partner and be with me and hopefully be the last person in my life. Yes. Because my kids You deserve it as well. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at having grandchildren. Exactly. Right now. Mm. So I'm not looking at playing with anybody's son. Oh, pause. Pause. <laughs> I'm not looking at playing with the anybody's child. Pulse. Yeah, I'm not looking at that. So I'm looking at someone who's going to come into my life and be a friend, be a, a helper, be a companionship. A companionship is all I want. That's what I want. So I want someone I can call in the morning and say, babe, this is what I want. Babe, did you sleep well? They don't yeah. have to stay with That's me romance. in the same place. Yes, yes it's romance. Romance is but nice. But most of you people don't believe in romance because you're, looking for, you're looking for money. <laughs> looking for money? Yes. Anyhow, money is good, but romance is sweet. Yes. That's what I'm looking for at my 50 years of age. I'm praying to God that he'll bless me with a man that is going to come my way and sweep me off my beautiful feet huh. and, you know, Life. And I mean, the you're beautiful, you're beautiful and, you know... And a hard worker too. Forget the hard work also, you're also beautiful. Mm, you're thank beautiful, you. you're doing well and thank you're somebody you. I, honestly, um, we've had our engagements and I appreciate women like you because as a single mom, right, trying in this world, sometimes the world can break you. It's not always easy. The world yeah. can break you. You can have good intentions. People can break you. And the fact that you, we are celebrating your 50th on the 3rd of Feb, right? Yes. On the 3rd of Feb, we are celebrating your 50th. It's a big achievement. You have gone through the most as a human being. You've, you've had trials and tribulations, as you said. You know, you've come far. And women like you are important. And also what I love is that you speak you speak your word and you're not afraid because you are independent. And this is what I always try to tell the city girls, that you have to be, the only reason that you can speak and be able to speak what you've just spoken to us is because you are independent and it's you that is controlling. Nobody's going to tell you to sit down and shut up because it's you that is controlling your narrative. I think this is the, the kind of the conclusion we're trying to teach women, that it's important to control your narrative and have a plan yes. for yourself. Don't wake up and say, my plan is to go to club tomorrow and get fucked by somebody who's going to give me 10,000, 15,000. That'll run out. Have a plan for yourself as a woman because we go to the same schools as these boys. We go to the same universities as these boys. We get better marks than some of these boys. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure that we have the same opportunities as the boys. Right? We have the same opportunities, Mm -hmm. but we don't want to take them because we want to be kept. Because that's what we are taught. No, we are not taught that. No, we are taught a By lot of who? women. A lot of women are taught to be submissive. Not me, not you. I think that's old school. Growing up, like people of my age, when we were growing up, the girl child was not allowed to go to school. Yes. Yes, but things have changed now. Yes. Things have really changed now. Mm-hmm. 
people of today, our mothers and fathers, they encourage our children to go to school, the girl child to even go to school. But you as a child, do you want to go to school? That's the problem. When you go to school, are you at attaining the results or doing what you're supposed to do at school? Or you are going there to be picked up by sugar daddies, being left at the school gate by your parents, then you are picked up two hours later, you come to school, you, 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 you chow your school fees and things like that. We still have children like that. Their children, parents are working very hard to take them to school. But they, they think that they are going to school for parents, yet you are going to school for yourself. But children think they are going to school because the parent has said go to school. You are not going to school for parents. You are going to school for you, for your future, for your own person to become an independent, an individual. But children of today don't understand that. Very few children understand that they are going to school for themselves. Yeah. Which is why we must always commit our kids under the wings of God. So that... But what they, if you're not Christian, Z? Then if you're not Christian, then I don't know how you then can teach your kids. They need to find an anchor. That's yes. what I'm saying. Not, yeah. What if you're Muslim? You know, what Even if, if you're Muslim, Muslims what if you are, are the most tribalist. disciplined people that yeah. I know. Yeah. Muslims also, they teach their kids in their own way. Mm -hmm. There's a way that they teach their children. Whatever you believe in, you must teach your you kids. You must teach your children how to live. Remember, we don't live forever. I might be alive today. Tomorrow I might not be there for my children. What legacy have I left for my kids? Legacy is not only about financial. What have I taught them? When I am no longer on this planet and my children are going to be taken by the next person, is that person going to be able to look after my children? Is that person going to be able to tolerate my children? Because children have got different behaviors. Mm. Other children are very naughty. They'll go to somebody else's house who is not going to be able to tolerate them because of the behavior that they have. Yes. So we have to be able to teach our, train our children the right way. In a way that if you are not there as a parent, the person who is going to take them in is going to be able to embrace them and accept and take them as good children. That's coming from a good home. That's the, what we must do. It's not easy. Growing up back then, a child belonged to the community. Yes. But, but now I could see some, your daughter misbehaving and beat them up and you will not have an issue. But today, if I see your child misbehaving and I beat them up, you come and swear the hell out of me. Yes. Why did you touch my child? Why did you do this? A child belongs to the owner. But before when we grew up, a child belong, belonged to any parent. So if you meet a child doing something wrong, any parent could discipline that child, yes. then advise the parents I later. I believe in that. That yeah. was, I think it was a better way of bringing up children. And children respected That's adults. True back then. Right now a child can talk back to you. Oh. You're not my mother. What? You're not my father. You can't tell me that. That's true. Children of today will do that. Yet you are trying to guide them the right way. Anyway, this is always inspiring, this conversation. Yeah, no, no, no. We've done... I think, I think we've gotten what we needed to get from this. So, I think the final word from you, what would you advise my city girls... Um, Guys, just speak to that camera, please. I think city girls. <laughs> I don't know where that city girls come from. City girls are hustlers, Z. I don't know hustling in which way. Hustling in any way, as long as you are doing achieving the goal. Okay, what I would say, my advice would would be, seek God first, seek guidance. I know it's not everyone that believes in God, but those that believe in God, if you pray. You ask for direction, you'll be guided. Keep the good company, a company that makes you, because your end result is surrounded by your, the company that you keep. The company that you keep the, is very is important. It's very important. Yes. And don't want to be your friend. Live your own life as you. Amen. God has given us different talents as individuals. Be your own person. Own your own destiny. Because if you want to be a teboho, she's got her own talent. And she's talented in different things. I'm a travel agent, for example. My young sister there owns a boutique. Yes. 
if I decide today, oh, she's doing so well, she's got posh in Zimbabwe, so I also want to own my own boutique. It's not my gift. I can open a boutique, but might not succeed Amen. as much as she succeeded. Amen she can that. open a travel agent, but might not succeed the way I've done. Because each person has got their own talent and yep. their own gift. And they, we all have different fields that we understand. There is no business I understand more than the travel agency on this planet. Give me anything travel, I'll do it. Anything hospitality, I'll do it. But give me something different, I might fail. Yes. Not because I'm a failure, but because I don't understand how it is done. It's not your so, word of advice, don't do a project or open a business because your friend is in the same business. I always tell people that do a business that you understand, something that you are passionate about. Yeah. You'll find yourself succeeding. Even if you're selling tomatoes. Yes. If you can, do you know, everybody, there's about 10 of us in this room. Everyone is a tomato. Yes. So selling tomatoes is not a poor man's business. Because everybody buys a tomato every day. Food lovers is not a poor man's business. Food lovers make money through selling vegetables. So do a business that you understand, something that you're passionate about, something that you know will, will move you to the next level. Don't copy what your neighbor is doing. And don't try That's to take saying. what your neighbor is eating. And don't want to live your friend's life. Yes. If you are jealous of each other as friends and want to live your friend's life, you'll never be anybody in life. Get a friend that is going to hold your hand, help you and move with you and grow with you. That's what you need. Thank you so much much this was so inspiring i'm now tipsy we've had a lot of tequila and champagne tequila. so i just can we just say cheers and happy 50th honey thank you so much Madam. keep doing you keep that booty big you know make that money <laughs> drive that badly love you so much very inspirational thank you Teboho. thank you so much for the opportunity see and you in cape cheers town. see you in cape town <laughs> turn up i'm gonna twerk on a yacht in cape town <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>